All right, YouTube, there are more problems at Fukushima. Um, I haven't been keeping up with the news on Fukushima quite as much since the Syrian crisis escalated, although I should have, uh, because there are actually several, and I'll put a link in the description to the most recent, there are several uh, interesting stories about the site that make it even more worrying than it was before. Um, not to be alarmist, but simply saying, it seems as though the people at TEPCO at, at, that are managing the plant are operating sort of like Homer Simpson uh, in the Springfield nuclear power plant. Um, with a similar level of, of danger to have a meltdown and a similar level of tact and, uh, and uh, intelligence. So there are new problems. Uh, the story linked in the description from today is that the radiation levels at the site are 18 times higher than previously thought. Um, that some of these storage tanks, which by the way, another story was that they are bolted together rather than uh, uh, melted together, you know, welded. Uh, which is a terrible idea and just means you're inviting corrosion because they're containing seawater. Um, but enough about that. Turns out radiation levels are 18 times higher than they thought they were a few days ago. Why? Um, because the instruments that they were using to measure radiation, and I don't know how to pronounce this word, so if I get it wrong, those of you who are grammar Nazis, correct me. Uh, millisieverts or millisieverts uh, per hour uh, their instruments go up to 100. It's actually 1800. They just didn't realize it because they didn't have any more sophisticated instruments. Meaning that if you were to stand on that site for four hours, you'd die. Uh, if you weren't wearing protective gear. Um, my thought, main thought being, my goodness, the workers who have been working in those conditions uh, should actually have been on site 18 times uh, less for an uh, Sh much shorter period of time than they're actually stationed there working on this uh, this immense pipeline system which is supposedly to cool off the reactor core and, and to store water um, because there's there's actually a, an international limit of what people are supposed to be exposed to so these people are probably dead they're gonna get cancer um, so there's a bunch of people that TEPCO is gonna have to pay out down the road assuming that they uh, still exist as a company after this debacle. Um, oh, there was another story four days ago that half of their decontamination system has been so heavily corroded that it no longer works. That is that the, uh, the systems that they use when the water is pumped back out of the reactor, see they pump seawater in to cool the rods, then it gets pumped back out and put into storage. Um, and it's supposed to be partially decontaminated as it's pumped out. The idea being, if it's decontaminated some, it's a little bit less dangerous to handle and store. Unfortunately, 50% of these uh, systems aren't working, so this water is, t is much more radioactive than it should be. Some of it's probably not even being filtered at all. Um, the tidal wave, uh, almost a tip of the hat to the tsunami there, uh, the tidal wave of problems at the site has... has risen drastically over the last few weeks. It was, for about a year there, you didn't hear much about Fukushima. You heard that, yeah, it was still sort of tenuous at best as to what they were doing there. Then they came out and said, well, we're going to try to to do this uh, fantastic job where we actually remove all the fuel rods manually, which uh, some of the more astute observers realized is highly unlikely they'd be able to do that without causing a nuclear fire and causing further meltdown and, and killing all the workers that were anywhere near the plant at the time they were trying to do it. Um, and since then, you've just seen it in the news over and over again. Right now, people are more focused on Syria, but they should be focused on Fukushima when you really think about it. If this place has a meltdown, and this it's ten, ten times more nuclear material than was ever at Chernobyl, not all of which even ignited. If all of the remaining nuclear material there were to ignite and it were to have a total catastrophic meltdown, um, the Pacific would be virtually useless for fishing. There's a lot of the world's fisheries that you can't extract food from. Uh, coastal economies would be fucked. Uh, agricultural land would be blanketed in a great deal of radioactive ash that would make it useless. The Napa Valley would be gone. Coastal China, which is a breadbasket, um, all the hundreds of millions of people who live there would start getting tumors. 
Korea basically, I mean, it's this little thin peninsula. Korea would cease to exist probably. Japan would be completely screwed. Chile, um, even if they got a lower dose of radiation, think about uh, the size and the shape of Chile. It's basically a long strip of coastal land. They'd be completely screwed. All of their agricultural land would be contaminated. Uh, I'd probably go over the mountains in Argentina. Uh, the Amazon would become a nice radioactive jungle if the animals there aren't dangerous already. Wait till they mutate ten times faster. Uh, be, you can't underestimate the danger of this plant just sitting there right on the coast with thousands and th tens of thousands of gallons of highly radioactive water. It's draining into the ocean, 300 tons of this material per day. There was another report, and I don't have a source for this, unfortunately, so I'll consider it hearsay, but I believe it is true and verified. <clears throat> I just can't find the exact source where it came from, is that because they're pumping so much water into the reactor and onto the site to cool these fuel rods and pumping it back out, yes, but there are leaks in, in the, the core itself as well that the groundwater level has been rising. Now, what's the problem? If you've ever seen a septic tank back up, <clears throat> where the water starts to rise to the surface, the ground gets all muddy and then you have puddles start to form. Now, what would be the problem with this is that these puddles would be highly radioactive. People wouldn't be able to get near the site. What happens if people, by virtue of an earthquake, causes problems, a tsunami pro causes problems, to a few storage tanks just, you know, give out completely and you've got hundreds of tons of radioactive water all over the site. The groundwater starts backing up above ground. Any of these things could cause a situation where the, the site itself becomes too radioactive to have people there even in protective gear. If that happens, you're not really going to have any options because there will no longer be any way for them to service the pipes that deliver cooling seawater into the reactor core. Now, what happens if, if that occurs? Well, eventually those pipes will stop working, and uh, it'll go into meltdown mode, and it'll be almost a doomsday scenario. For those who are living on uh, the, the west coast of any of the Americas, or the east coast of any of these Pacific countries, or especially the Japanese, the Koreans, and the Filipinos, and, and people around that, those regions where you've got small peninsulas and islands that are mostly coastal anyway, uh, these people would die by, by the millions. You could have hundreds of millions of people die. And the people at TEPCO who are managing Fukushima don't seem to know what the hell's going on. They're using substandard instruments. They could have asked some other company to buy, you know, more advanced instruments to take more accurate readings. They've got these really makeshift storage tanks that are constantly springing leaks. More leaks, by the way, have been found since the last one. The leaks selling like 400 tons of material onto the site. There are more leaks now, too. The groundwater's rising. They've got a jerry-rigged, um, um, uninsulated un pipe system that keeps springing leaks every, every winter and spring that's feeding the coolant into these reactors, into the reactor cores. Um, you've got the perfect situation here to have a colossal meltdown and to have over a thousand tons of radioactive material shot into the atmosphere. And nobody cares. You've got the mentality of the people in the public who are not paying attention to this story is only dwarfed by the mentality of the people working at TEPCO who obviously have no clue what they're doing. Your average science fair winner in any, in any standard uh, high school could probably think, uh, think of a better system to deal with this issue. The Japanese are supposedly some of the smartest people on Earth with some of the coolest techno gadgets. They keep giving us Pokemon and all of these cool things. These people are supposed to know better. These are supposed to be the cream of the crop as far as scientists go. These are supposed the Japanese and the Germans are supposedly these, these brilliant scientific minds, and yet you've got the situation where they didn't even know that the radiation level was 18 times higher than what they were measuring as because their instruments were maxed out. I mean, these are little handheld gadgets that you can buy on eBay that are measuring this radiation. You'd think that a company that large, this is a GE-built plant, uh, with that much money, the backing of the Japanese government, too, 
you'd think they could buy better equipment. You'd think they could insulate the piping system so that it's not leaking every single winter when the frost comes and, oh, the pipe just burst. Guess what? If, if a pipe bursts one more time, you could have a situation where the coolant stopped just long enough so that the whole pile of nuclear material ignites. And people would rather focus on Syria, like, like sarin is, is just as bad as a massive nuclear meltdown that poisons most of the Pacific Ocean. Because we've got to remember, only a small fraction of the nuclear material at the site actually went into the atmosphere. Most of it's still sitting there. Now, under seawater now, there's the other problem. Seawater's corrosive. And the core is a shell of concrete. Concrete degrades fairly quickly when it's exposed to seawater. The salts in it react with the lime and the concrete and essentially render it completely useless. Now, what's going to happen if, I don't know, this concrete shell that all this blob of melted nuclear material is in that's being cooled so it doesn't melt down, what happens if this concrete degrades enough so that there's more water going out than water coming in? And, by the way, we've only got 12 hours before it melts down. We need a bigger pipe to pump more coolant in. Well, what happens if you can't set it up quickly enough and safely enough? Now that the radiation level is so much higher, you'd think that if the radiation level is 18 times higher, that these workers, because there are, again, international limits imposed on how much radiation a worker can absorb in a year so that they don't grow tumors on their skull, um, you'd think that they would only be able to be there a much smaller period of time, 18 times less than they were before, because now we know the true measurement of radiation. They finally got the equipment in there to take an accurate reading, which they should have had to begin with. Uh, they sat on their ass for a year and just pumped water into the system and kept amassing this radioactive material in storage tanks. People are burying nuclear waste in their backyard. This is no joke. There was an actual German documentary done on this. Partially treated nuclear material taken from the site is being buried in people's backyards as temporary storage. They don't have anywhere else to put it. They have nowhere to put this material except in people's backyards. People's yards and the roads and the trees and their gardens and these crop fields around the site are all radioactive now. They started stripping topsoil off of these sites and burying it in an attempt to, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, it's not working. The radioactivity in some of these areas still hasn't decreased. It's actually getting worse in some areas because the radioactivity falls on hills and mountains and then it collects in the lower lying areas, which by the way, humans tend to live more in valleys than on the side of mountains. Oh, guess what? We keep having to clean up the same area because more and more radiation comes down from this hill over here. These are supposed to be the most sophisticated scientific minds on Earth. Japan is extremely intelligent and extremely competitive. I have to wonder if TEPCO didn't hire for its highest levels of administration and planning the lower dregs of the class who couldn't get in at one of the plants that was actually functioning fine or something like You have to wonder who planned the site to begin with. They actually lowered the coastal land to build it when they should have actually raised it up to protect against the same tsunami that destroyed in the first place in an earthquake-prone area right on the coast. Nothing else could possibly have been more wrong than to put this plant there, especially since it uses the older style of cooling system where it has to be continuously fed water or it ignites. Any day now, I could wake up and look on the news and say, oh, Fukushima just blew its top. By the way, United States, you're going to get a nice dose of fallout. Pop some potassium iodide pills. They're decommissioning the one nuclear plant we've got in my state, partially because of budget concerns, because it's not making any money, and partially because people here don't want it. They don't want a nuclear plant here in the state of Vermont. Nor should anyone want to live near a nuclear plant. Yeah, it might work fine for 50 years and never have a single issue. Or something might go wrong. An earthquake, you know, destroys one of the cooling towers or, or knocks a fuel rod loose. And all of a sudden you've got a catastrophe. And it's even worse because it's on the coast. It has the potential to poison the water as well as the atmosphere. When Chernobyl hit, it was an inland area. It did not poison any major watersheds. 
This is not the case at Fukushima. What they ought to do is divert all the money and planning that's going to Syria right now to Fukushima, put as many good nuclear experts from the U.S. and Europe in Japan right now that they can, with the amount of money they can spare to do it, to figure out this problem, because it's a ticking time bomb, in the most literal sense, too. Um, they won't, but that's what they really ought to be doing, because literally, any day now, you could wake up and, and uh, Fukushima just had another meltdown. Kiss your ass goodbye, because, you know, a great deal of food is now useless. Uh, you're going to have much higher prices on fish, and oh, by the way, just as an aside, two, three hundred million people are going to die, and the entire west coast of the Americas is now depopulated. It's a ridiculous situation. Uh, the Japanese government should get some better people in there to deal with this situation. It's obvious that they...